Okay. Um, welcome everybody uh, to this webinar um, that we have entitled Key to Success in India, Stories from Cooperation in Higher Education. My name is Camilla Tetler and I'm an advisor at EQ, the Norwegian Agency for International Cooperation and Quality Enhancement in Higher Education. With me from DQ today are uh, Head of Section for Global Cooperation, Hilda Holland Kramer, and Advisor Karolina Popossen. Together, we are working to facilitate Norway India cooperation in the field of higher education. We are very happy uh, to see that so many of you are joining the webinar. Uh, we have several prominent speakers with us today covering the topic from different point of views. Uh, you will also have the opportunity to ask questions uh, using the Q&A function during the webinar. So, let's see. Uh, this is an outline of the program uh, for today. Um, we will start with an introduction by uh, Hilda from DQ. And then we'll uh, move on uh, to uh, a presentation from the Councillor for Science, Technology and Higher Education um, at the Embassy uh, in Delhi. Uh, then uh, we'll have uh, two cases, one from the University of Agder and another one from the University of Tromsø um, before we have a short break. Then we'll move on to uh, a third case of today uh, from the University of Southeastern Norway, uh, a case within teacher education. Um, and after that, we'll have um, the director from the Nordic Center joining us, uh, talking about uh, their work and how they could be of support to you. We'll wrap up the webinar with some final remarks uh, on funding opportunities and support. So uh, I will now give the word to uh, Hilda Holan Kamar. She's the head of section for global cooperation um, at DQ. So please, Hilda. Uh, thank you. Let me see if we can get the uh, slides to work. Yes. Uh, thank you, Camilla. Uh, internationalization in higher education is of great importance to Norway. And um, international cooperation is a means to enhance quality and relevance in higher education. This is achieved through relevant, mutual, and long-term institutional cooperation. It's also a priority to support strong links between education, research, and work life, public and private sector. Increased student mobility is a goal for the Norwegian government. In this context, DQ's main task is to develop tools to further increase the number of outgoing students as well as incoming students. The current COVID-19 pandemic has posed great challenges to international cooperation. However, we have also seen that international cooperation is more important than ever. We must ensure that the students and future graduates are provided with the skills that they need for the future and that they are able to study and work across borders and across disciplines. The Norwegian government will launch its uh, white paper on student mobility on Friday this week, October 30. And international cooperation in higher education will thus remain an important priority for Norway in the years to come. One uh, such um, one way of doing this is through the Panorama Strategy. The Panorama Strategy was launched in 2015 by the Norwegian government. This is a strategy for cooperation within higher education and research with prioritized partners. These countries are Brazil, Russia, India, Japan, China, and South Africa, and from 2021, also South Korea and North America. These countries are important global and regional players and invest heavily in research and higher education. The overall goal of the strategy has been to further develop the Norwegian knowledge society through collaboration. The aim is to facilitate strong links between higher education, research, and working life. The new, a new 
Panorama strategy will be launched at the end of this year and will cover the period 2021 to 2027. The aims will be the same, but in addition, collaboration to solve global challenges and contribute to the SDGs will also be important elements for the next period. To facilitate cooperation with these countries, including India, will therefore remain an important task for DICU. Higher education um, or cooperation between India and Norway has a long uh, history. Uh, but uh, as you can see from the numbers, student mobility is modest uh, between our countries and slightly increasing year by year. India is one of the uh, Asian countries that send the most students to Norway, but we still have a great potential to increase student mobility between Norway and India. There's also common interest between Norwegian and Indian authorities to invest in international col collaboration. And this was uh, became apparent during the years 2015 to 2018 when the University Grant Commission and DICU co-developed and co-financed the Indo-Norwegian Cooperation Program. The program was a success in kickstarting more in, in institutional cooperation, and most of the projects have continued their co collaboration with support from other funding sources. Today, DQ administers several programs that can support cooperation between Norway and Indian higher education institutions, and currently 35 projects are running with support from different programs. Most of the programs are, have, are open to all academic fields, and we see that projects between Norway and India are within different disciplines, such as social science, medicine, and health, and also natural sciences and engineering. There is currently a call for applications open for Utforsk and Intpart programs, uh, and uh, Camilla will tell you a little bit more about those at the end of today's seminar. Intern Abroad is being merged into the Utforsk call. When it comes to the Erasmus Plus International Credit Mobility, there will not be a call in this, uh, this year. Uh, this is due to the transition to the new program period, but the next deadline we think will be in February 2022. To illustrate why international cooperation in higher education and research remains important despite practical and cultural challenges, I will end with an example from NTNU. Um, they have developed a new and effective COVID-19 test that are being used in Norway as well as in Denmark and India. The team consists of staff from different disciplines and nationalities. One of the lead researchers as you, that you can see at the top left in this picture is Dr. Sulalit Panjopadjai, and he came from India to NTNU as an Erasmus Munda student 10, student 10 years ago, and is now one of the key researchers working to help solve one of the largest global challenges of today. He's also coordinating several projects with Indian partner institutions supported by Erasmus Plus and the Research Council of Norway, thereby further strengthening academic links between our two countries. This shows the importance of investing in students and international cooperation. These are long-term investments and can lead to unexpected outcomes and have a posit positive impact on society. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Hilda. Um, the next speaker is Dr. Man Singh Sidhu. He is an actor, acting country director at Innovation Norway, uh, the India offices in Delhi and Mumbai. He has extensive experience uh, from research, innovation, public administration, and international industries. He is currently also serving as a counselor for science, technology, and higher education at the Royal Embassy in New Delhi. As a counselor, he is re uh, representing the Research Council of Norway, Innovation Norway, and DQ in India. His mandate is to strengthen Norway's bilateral cooperation with India um, in the fields of research, innovation, and higher education, and um, connect international needs with Norwegian innovative solutions um, to help Norwegian businesses expand in India. So the screen is yours, Man.
Please, uh, man, uh, unmute. Hey, yes. Can you hear me? Am I audible? Yes, you are on. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, dear colleagues and friends, a very good morning to everyone. And thank you for inviting me uh, for this inspirational webinar and how uh, just to find out potentials, how to get success in India uh, when it comes to higher education, science and technology. Uh, so let me let me actually start with uh, some strength of India, which could be of interest for many of those who are attending this seminar. Uh, there is, uh, this is well known that international cooperation create quality and access to network infrastructure and market. And as we uh, we all are aware of that, development in India will be have significant significant impa impact on how successful the world is achieving the sustainable go development goal and global climate targets. Keeping this in mind, the Norwegian government is seeking to strengthen Norway bilateral relations, political relations, scientific in, uh, relations, including higher education and economic ties with India. Moreover, uh, both countries are doing very uh, high level good results, uh, research. Globally, India is sharing 5.3% of scientific publications and stand third in the position. And over uh, 350,000 patents applications submitted uh, were from India, and majority of these are from IITs, Indian Institute of Technologies. Uh, these figures are uh, from uh, two years ago, uh, but still uh, 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 it's uh, impressive. Uh, since uh, in 2016, there were uh, there has been some constant uh, amplification of number of partnership between international universities because all India Council of Technical Education and University Grant Commission has issued a guideline in, to increase synergy between India and foreign universities. So uh, several universities, they have provided semester exchange program, summer and winter school and scholarship that helps Indian students gain some exposure uh, while worldwide by traveling to different countries. Uh, 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 there is one example, a good example, like a group of uh, a Norwegian master's student, around 20 students from uh, Science and Technology University and TNU. They have worked together with Goa Smart C uh, City and they visited a field visit for one full semester in 2019. And they have they have find a good solution for smart city landscape and they have presented their results uh, on, on after that visit. Uh, uh, most of the in, in, uh, Indian institutes, they are inviting faculty uh, from foreign countries uh, to conduct classes in India. Uh, the students get chance to interact with foreign faculty and learn uh, from more perspectives. Sorry. Uh, as you all know that in, uh, India is the uh, world largest democracy and rapidly growing emerging economy. It's a geopolitical role, it's a huge population, it's long coastline, and not least it's booming economy make India an increasing influential global player. And uh, it's uh, increasing important. Uh, therefore, it is an important partner for Norway as well. So Norway India 2030 is a Norwegian government study strategy launched uh, recently in December uh, 2018 for strengthen the cooperation with India. In order, to, in order to achieve these objectives set uh, in this strategy, Norway will focus on three, th uh, three things. Uh, the first is political cooperation with, between the authorities. Second is business cooperation. And third is research and education cooperations. Uh, there are coordinate efforts across the knowledge triangle is being identified uh, to strengthen the cooperation potential between India and Norway. Moreover, to implement the identify high uh, potential opportunities or most common opportunities to strengthen the scientific and business relation between two countries. Uh, the collaboration of efforts are made collectively by the Research Council of Norway, DECU and Innovation Norway. To follow up this coordinate efforts, uh, I have been coordinating few of the activities like dialogue with the government uh, partners, promoting uh, Norway as an attractive partners in the market for business research and education uh, institutions, supporting institutional partnership between India and Norway, promoting mobility and joint project with uh, company, companies as a partner, utilizing and optimizing the use of relevant funding mechanism, uh, 
uh, facilitating and promoting research, innovation, higher education uh, in India, uh, and uh, finding some opportunities for exchange of scientists, student information and documents, and, and so on. So these are the my uh, this is the task why I'm actually doing in India for promoting uh, the interest of in Norway in India. Uh, now I will talk about a few updates and new policies, uh, Indian policy that might be of some that uh, might have some significant role in our strategic and operational cooperative uh, collaborative activities uh, here in Norway as well as in India. Uh, a new national policy 2020 has been announced in uh, on uh, July this year 2020. And the main aim of this uh, national education policy is to bring transformational reform in school and higher education system in India. Because no significant changes was made during the past 34 years. Uh, I will not go much in detail, but would like to highlight few significant points uh, from the policy that will be uh, of our interest. Uh, the first thing is uh, higher education uh, like uh, uh, quality university, making more quality university and colleges in India. And uh, national education policy proposed four years multidisciplinary bachelor degree in an undergraduate program with multiple exit option. The second one is the gross enrollment role, which could be of interest in higher education to raise 50% by the year of 2035. But the current level of uh, gross en enrollment role is 25. So government is aiming to double this uh, gross enrollment role by 2035. Uh, set up best multidisciplinary education of global standards in country as model. This is to empower the students and to meet the global standards. And few points that will uh, about the internationalization and research and development. Uh, national edu education policy focused to promoting India as a global student destination, uh, providing premium education as afford affordable cost. Uh, foreign, like foreign university can now set up campus in India. So this is a good move for India. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and for example, an international student's office in each higher education institute uh, will be developed and uh, to support students arriving from abroad and, and legislative framework shall be formulated and introduced uh, facilitating the entry of foreign university in India. Uh, various initiatives mentioned of uh, uh, what I'm mentioning here uh, will also help in having large number of international students studying in India to provide greater mobility to students in India. There is second. Uh, the, there is second uh, policy which is going to be launched in near future. That is, uh, uh, science, technology, and innovation policy 2020. This is a holistic and pro uh, pragmatic policy dedicated to science, technology, and most importantly, innovation. Uh, the policy aims to reorientate science, technology, innovation in terms of uh, priorities, uh, sectoral focus, and strategies. So since this has not been launched yet, so there are some process ongoing uh, and this process has like uh, starting from uh, extended public and expert consultations, thematic groups uh, and this gro thematic groups uh, is uh, driven by 21 expert uh, uh, areas uh, and uh, ministerial and state consultations, bringing together ministers and states uh, in extensive engagement through nominating nodal offices officers. And uh, the last one is multi-stakeholder engagement where they are aiming to act, uh, uh, to be act uh, they, where they have aimed as acting as a united, uh, uniting force leading to multi-level and multi-stakeholder and engagement in uh, at the national and global levels. So actually we are looking forward to this uh, new policy which will be launched in the near future and uh, let's see how this be, will be benefit for uh, Norway. Uh, the, the last one which I would like to uh, highlight in a brief, like India, um, India uh, uh, aspires to become a trillion dollar economy in the near, near future. This national innovation and startup policy launched in 2019 for students and faculty for higher education uh, will enable the institutes to actively engage student uh, faculties and staff in innovation and entrepreneurship related activities. 
This framework program, which uh, will also facilitate the Ministry of Education, uh, uh, recently changed. Uh, formerly, it was known Ministry of Human Resource and Development, will bring uniformity uh, across uh, higher education institutes in terms of intellectual property as uh, ownership management, for example, technology licensing, uh, institutional startship policy, uh, and so on. Uh, I have listed a few upcoming calls, and some of them are already been said uh, in this uh, session before. Uh, uh, and uh, another thing I would also like to bring the attention to make uh, the importance of research and innovative technologies to generate knowledge and thus tackling global challenges. Research and innovation provide us more room for in international platform, good infrastructure, and access to knowledge and experiences. There is no denying that science and technology has impact on driving economic growth and innovation. Moreover, such activities provide more research and, and researcher and student exchange mobility and so on. So there are some examples uh, uh, like ERA, ERA Net Co Fund uh, ACT third call has been launched. Uh, where 15 partners from AU and as well as India is participating. Uh, and this uh, from Norway, the Research Council of uh, Norway, they are putting uh, 60 million uh, kroners in this. And from the Indian side, the Department of Science and Technology is uh, uh, participating. So deadline for this application uh, for pre-proposal is on 10th of November, which is quite soon. I hope uh, you are aware of that. And, uh, and the contact person uh, for, from the research council is Oge Stangelan. So please, if you have any question, you can either contact him or uh, contact me so that we can uh, start facilitating or uh, helping you if you are any ambitions to apply some funding from this ERANET uh, co-fund. Uh, and the second one is that on, uh, on September uh, this year, the Department of Biotechnology, uh, uh, they have agreed to co-fund successful Indian entities for five Green Deal call topics under uh, Horizon 2020 work program. Uh, and um, this, uh, 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 this is uh, already been in process. So if you have any intentions to apply, so you can uh, take contact with the Research Council of Norway, or you can take contact me, with me as well. So there we have some, uh, in the Research Council, we have uh, NCP, uh, National Contact Points, who, who, who are experts and who can help you to understand uh, better how you can help, uh, uh, they can help you to ap ap applying and writing a good proposal. Um, uh, in guiding, I mean. And there, there have been some uh, with FOSC and in part that has been already discussed. So, and I think um, we will discuss later on more about this. This is my last picture. And uh, this picture was taken under the delegation visit to India in February, 2020. Some of you may have find uh, you, uh, the, yourself in this picture. So I hope that this two, uh, two hour session will be fruitful, uh, fruitful platform for many of us who are looking for collaboration and opportunities in India. And I would like to thank the organizers for this important session. And I'm looking forward to take opportunities and discussion from this web webinar further. Having said that, I wish you all a very successful and fruitful discussion sessions. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Man. Um, do we have any questions uh, for Man Carolina? Oh, Camilla, actually we don't. Uh, so just a kind reminder for our audience that uh, feel free to uh, write a question in the Q&A section on the bottom of your screen if you have any questions for uh, the panelists. Um, there's no questions as of now, so maybe we should just move on with the program, Camilla, and maybe there will come up something later. Absolutely. Um, then we will have um, Stina Torjesen. Um, she will uh, present the first of three uh, practical examples uh, of today of uh, collaboration already going on between Norwegian and Indian uh, institutions and um, businesses. Stina Torjesen is an uh, associate professor at the University of uh, Agda School of Business and Law. She holds the considerable experience from the world of business, policy making, and international organizations. With funding from the Utforsk program that we have already mentioned today, and intern abroad, 
She has been uh, coordinating a collaboration project with the Indian Institute of Technolo Technology in Mumbai, inviting Norwegian students to, to mix high quality courses at IIT Mumbai with internships. Um, we are very much looking forward to hear from you, Stina. Thank you so much, and uh, and really, uh, thank you so much for giving us uh, an opportunity to to talk and uh, and describe our experiences and our uh, uh, collaboration with the School of uh, Management at the IITB in in Mumbai. So, uh, and as Carolina mentioned, the, the key thing with our case is that we've combined uh, access and participation in really excellent uh, courses at IITB, uh, and in parallel, our students have done. Uh, internships in Norwegian companies operating uh, in the Mumbai area. Um, and the kind of the starting point for us to, to work towards this and, and, and allow for this has really been that uh, at the School of Business and Law, um, we want our students um, to enable their future employers to succeed in global business. So in order to do so, they need to understand and navigate major emerging markets such as India. So the UEA School of Business and Law, uh, we basically have around 2000 students, give or take. We have an integrated bachelor and master program called Civil Ekonom Studia. We also have a sizable uh, PhD program in international business. And a key kind of uh, emphasis uh, in our program is international internationalization, innovation, and responsibility. And we really want our students to have this kind of global mindset when they graduate, either if they've done a bachelor with us or if they've done the full five-year program as civil economic uh, students, we want them to really understand the international business. And in order to do that, we are really encouraging and trying to get them to go abroad, either in their bachelor or in their master, or ideally both. Uh, so we are doing this program for our civil economic students. In addition, we've also opened up for the engineers at the, the faculty in the technology faculty so that we also have parts of these students that have done this internship uh, uh, type of, of program they also uh, do what's called uh, industrial economics uh, and also a very interesting set of students that are also benefiting very strongly from interning with Norwegian companies in the Mumbai area so that's a bit of the background uh, for us and, and why we wanted to do that and um, what we've done basically uh, as you can see uh, our students do courses at the IITB in Mumbai, which is one of the really top ranked institutions uh, in India. Uh, at the same time, in parallel, they do an internship at the Norwegian um, company, uh, around 300 hours uh, in, in the, throughout the fall semester. They're working with, uh, with international companies, um, with Norwegian companies. Uh, at the same time, they live inside the IITB campus of really a fascinating place to be, uh, lots of innovation, incredibly bright students, uh, and also uh, interesting international students. So a vibrant college, uh, university community that they take part of and build relations to. Uh, so, and then, uh, uh, as we said, they do this integrated, um, it's either integrated into the industrial economics program that we have at the University of Agder, or is integrated into this civil economic uh, degree that we have uh, at UER. So that's our students. And uh, so here uh, in Mumbai, we are then cooperating with Jotun, Elkem, Kongsberg, Arco Solutions, DNV, uh, are among the companies that we've sent students to. Our, uh, they're very happy is the feedback we get uh, with having their students there. Um, and we also run a similar arrangement in Indonesia, China, and Tanzania. But here, of course, we are concentrating um, on the um, uh, we're concentrating on the on the Mumbai side side of things. So um, just a few slides to give you a flavor of our of, of what it's like to do this internship. So one of our students, Tonya, uh, Tonya Bakke, she basically did uh, last year she did an internship with Kongsberg Maritime, uh, just situated on the outskirts uh, of Mumbai, uh, and she and her role there was to really try and facilitate the integration processes that was taking place at the time when Kongsberg had bought Rolls-Royce Marine, 
globally. And that integration was also happening in the Mumbai area. So she was helping um, the, the director uh, uh, at Kongsberg Maritim in India. She was helping him in the efforts to really kind of um, facilitate that integration process. So that's fantastic learning for our students and uh, also nice contributions to the, to the Kongs internal Kongsberg Maritim processes. And our student, she highlights that the, the learning uh, outcomes for her when she did this internship was experiencing a new work culture, understanding the Indian market, networking both with colleagues and not least also with these really top caliber uh, Indian students at IITB um, and just working and managing well in this kind of bustling Mumbai uh, life that she had. Uh, and just a few flavors from, from, her, um, from her experience. The, the in most interesting part of this picture is really, uh, as you can see this, um, uh, here you will see the, the picture from, uh, from this um, seminar room is one where Kongsberg Maritim is following the launch of the, of the, um, uh, of the Johan Kasberg, um, now the, the Sverdrup field uh, in Norway. So one of the major oil fields in Norway where Kongsberg Maritim and the IT engineers based in Mumbai had really contributed to this and they were following, uh, following uh, the launch, uh, the launch or the uh, the start uh, of that. So also just to highlight really the tight integration between lots of the processes that are happening in India to what is happening commercially in Norway and vice versa. And again, our students from a University of Agno perspective, they need to understand those types of integrations and work well, both in an Indian setting and in a, in a Norwegian setting. Um, and again, as we said, life as, as, as campus is a key selling point, the, the prospect, prospect of being integrated and networking with what we think are the future business leaders uh, in India is a, in an amazing opportunities for, for us. Um, secondly, what we're really trying to work on uh, at the University of Agder is to create a dynamic and kind of vibrant alumni community or alumni network of both the Indian students that are coming here to, uh, that are coming here to Norway and uh, the Norwegian students that are going to India. So this is a mutual exchange. We are sending our Norwegian, uh, uh, Norwegian students to IITB. We also have six IITB students, uh, four or six uh, students coming in the spring semester uh, uh, each year to us. And we're trying to, so far we've managed to kind of make them overlap a bit so that they build relations so that uh, they are kind of helping to prepare each other when they are about to start their new uh, to start the exchange, you see, see what I mean. So when the Norwegian students um, are in India, they are kind of helping the new cohort of the Indians that are going to Norway uh, and vice versa, um, that um, the Indians can help the, the, the Norwegians where, uh, when they are here in Norway. So we're trying to build that, that network. Uh, we're starting that work. We think that has a lot of opportunity that it, this is a, there's a lot of value in, in that network. Uh, again, which is a network of future business leaders, uh, technology leaders, both in India and Norway. Uh, now with this has been abrupted, of course, by COVID-19 because this fall and spring we're halting exchanges, but we're hoping to start that as soon as possible. And then we'll try and kind of uh, reignite this kind of uh, um, this relay, if you like, uh, of students in, of Indian and Norwegian students. Students. Um, so, uh, so that's that's kind of what we're engaged in doing. And so far, our figures are we've, we've done this in 2018 and 19. So, four is, uh, we are students at IITB, and then we've had four and six students from IITB here at the University of Agder. And just also to stress the value of having the IITB students here at University of Agder. These are really top, they're brilliant students and they're a real asset to our student community and not least our teaching as well, uh, given that the high caliber that they have. So to, uh, to round up our case, um, uh, so what is what have we been kind of what how did we go about uh, doing this and the key thing for us is really a careful selection of our Indian part of partner and we were basically asking ourselves three questions we were asking ourselves where are the future business and technology leaders of uh, India being educated uh, where are Norwegian companies in India which institutions can uh, each institution can serve as a long-term strategic partner at where that can give us two-way exchange of students and emerging research collaboration. That was the kind of key criteria that we're, we're, we're putting forward. And uh, what we kind of landed uh, on, uh, and we are extremely fortunate on our part, we are 
humbled and fortunate, uh, we're humble and fortunate that, uh, that we have been able to establish the cooperation with the renowned School of Management at IITB Bombay. Um, so, and we really want to keep developing uh, that relationship. Uh, and then finally, I think a kind of key success criteria for getting this going has been the persistent and comprehensive support from the Norwegian Consulate General uh, in Mumbai, including through uh, Anne Olesta, really excellent support, helping us build that network and build the human relations uh, that, that it takes both on the academic and institutional side and also among the students. We feel really well taken care of by the Norwegian Consulate in Mumbai. That's a unique asset that we feel very lucky that we were able to draw on. Uh, we are also extremely thankful for the interest and collaborative spirit in the Norwegian companies, which is a crucial part, of course, uh, and not least the access to additional funding um, and even moderate amounts go a, go a long way. That's given us some extra support in addition to the Norwegian state loan fund that the Norwegian students are enjoying. Um, and it's also kind of uh, helped us initiate the exchange of Indian students to Norway. So we do see that some funding, not big, big money, but some funding I think is needed on both sides, both to the Norwegian students and the Indian, Indian students in order to make, to, to make the, that happen. Now that is a key challenge for us and we need to kind of keep that going. Again, it doesn't, there's not extremely high amounts of money that is needed, but a bit extra can kind of help, um, help trigger and facilitate a smooth running of the program that we, that we have going. So with that, uh, thank you so much again for the opportunity to, to showcase uh, uh, our experiences. And again, thank you for this uh, seminar. Uh, and um, any questions, very welcome. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Sina. It's uh, always very good to have um, uh, some, yeah, some practical examples of, uh, to see and some advices on how to set up your collaboration. I like the overlapping um, of stays between Indian and Norwegian students so they can be an asset to each other. Uh, that's a very good uh, uh, tip for that maybe others can uh, do as well. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, um, Colina, and there has been uh, one comment I can see. Um, uh, yes, so um, there was one general question if uh, the recording from this webinar will be published and yes, it will. Uh, we are recording this webinar and it will be published on DQ's website on the same page where you found um, the arrangement on our website. Um, and there is also one, uh, maybe a comment more than a question uh, from Oslo Met, uh, Faculty of Health Sciences. Um, uh, commenting that they wish that Indian institutions have good residential facilities within or outside the campus uh, for foreign students. Um, and maybe, uh, uh, Mom, you mentioned a bit about the new policies in India and the way I understood it. Uh, this is also one of India's goals to be better at facilitating incoming foreign students uh, at Indian institutions. So um, uh, I think that would be in the new policies. Mm. But do you maybe, Stina, you have any uh, comments on uh, how the residential facilities are for Norwegian students? Uh, well, um, <laughs> there uh, they are, um, how to put it? Uh, I think it's a new, new experience. Uh, for our students, um, we, they have the option of either um, either renting an apartment in the nearby, it's called the Puvai area of uh, uh, around IATB, which is a very kind of upscale uh, area. It's quite expensive there, but if they want to, they can have a flat there uh, or they can uh, rent inside the, the campuses at IITB. Uh, and our students so far, they've really opted to be part of the, the campus. This is really where they can build their network. So we are always, uh, I, it is a bit of a, um, it's a bit of a change the, the camp, the residential facilities for our students, um, but uh, it's, it's, it keeps improving. I think the, the, I, the IITB campus is, is continuously kind of being built and modernized. And on our side, I think the value of being, the, uh, you know, the IITB students, they work exceptionally hard. They study all the time. <laughs> and the socializing really takes place in the kind of the, the late hours of the evening. And if you want to build your Indian network, you really have to be at the campus. Um, so our, our students, they've chosen the campus all along. Uh, I think, um, the, uh, again, they experience a change, I think, from their from their lifestyles at home in, in a number of ways. 
but uh, they come out of it extremely happy and, and kind of confident for the choice that they, they made. But it's, um, yeah, it's something we've discussed continuously, uh, how, how to do that. Yeah. Uh, and there's also a, a question. Um... Can, can, can I ask, answer this uh, Oslo Matt? Just a little comment. <clears throat> I, I totally agree with uh, what C Stina is mentioning here about this. But uh, but uh, I, uh, what my experience so far from India uh, being uh, living in India is that uh, uh, India is attractive country for not only for Norway but most of the country, European country as well as. Uh, 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 America, Canada, and uh, most of the countries. So, so uh, most of the uh, uh, renowned uh, res uh, 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 higher education institutes. So they are providing good uh, facilities for international students. And if they don't have any such fa facilities uh, in their campus, so they will they provide good guidance and support from their uh, management. So. So if uh, Oslo Matt or anybody, if, if, if you want uh, a, any kind of input from, from embassy uh, or from the in Innovation Norway, so we will, we will uh, be more than happy to help and establish good relation in India uh, for you guys. So please, uh, we, can, we can talk and find some good solution if you are already ex experiencing any kind of challenges that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, any more questions, Carolina? Uh, yes, there is one question. Um, uh, if um, Stina, do you have any experience with the Nordic Center in India? Um, we have uh, a session, um, a presentation from the Nordic Center in India later in the webinar. Um, I'm yes. not sure if you have used them. Yeah, uh, well, uh, um, we, we have uh, uh, nascent relationships, uh, a relation, relationship with, uh, with the Nordic Center in India. We, our impression is really, really good. Uh, and we have contact already with, with Cristobal. Um, so, uh, but we have, in, in our case, in this particular case, we haven't used them for that, but that's, uh, uh, that's really because we had established links and we had other channels to establish. We, we both have had a collaboration with JNU in Delhi. And then later in uh, IITB in Mumbai, and uh, in that sense, they weren't needed. But we very much want to be engaged in in the great work that is happening at the um, at the Nordic Center. So for us, it's just been a question of time and 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 getting started in developing these relations. But we haven't actually drawn on them, although our our impression is very good. So uh, and this, as as you say, will be a further issue later on in in the webinar. Uh, we have one uh, minute left, uh, and uh, there is one question uh, from uh, IIT Ropar in India. Uh, how can Norwegian students be better supported at an Indian university campus? So this is a question from Indian side. So do you have any reflections on that, uh, Stina? On my side? Well, um, it depends. I mean, uh, I think every university does it differently. Uh, uh, and on our side, I mean, we've had a fairly limited number of students and we have actually used quite a lot of work hours, if you like, in how we've supported them. So our professor, Professor Stein Christiansen, a really um, a key kind of pioneer, I think, in, in facilitating Norwegian uh, exchange abroad for, uh, you know, over three decades. Uh, he's basically traveled to our students uh, at least once a semester or even twice to kind of help them kind of initiate uh, their work. But in our case, that has also been to kind of maintain the dialogue with the company. So on our side, we've used quite a lot of resources time-wise to, to, to facilitate the support. So. So in that sense, uh, there has been that kind of support. And in addition, as I said, we've had the Norwegian consulate and the, the, the trainees at the, at, the, at the Norwegian consulate, that is trainees as part of the, the usual Norwegian uh, foreign office uh, arrangements. They have also kind of reached out to our students. So that's been very fortunate on our side. So in that sense, use, utilizing the resources that are associated with the embassies and the consulates is one thing. And then it's a matter of following up either digitally or, or physically, I think, on, on, uh, on those from our side that are kind of managing these, these courses, uh, mm -hmm. hopefully. But again, this is a, in our case, 
we also need to spend a lot of time di in our dialogue with the Norwegian companies. So that, um, so that, that kind of, uh, that makes us prioritize the time as well to, to have a dialogue with the students. Yeah, I hope that's an answer. Yes, thank you, Stina. All right. Um, thank you very much, uh, Stina. Thank you for taking your time to answer our questions. We know that you put a lot of uh, work into these uh, collaborations and making a lot of effort to to uh, make uh, yeah to structure an interesting stay for the students. Um, so we will then move on to another case. Um, this will be a presentation uh, of, from Mr. Valpreet Singh Aluvalia, who is a professor at UIT, the Arctic University of Norway, in the field of nanoscopy. He has extensive experience in combining research, innovation, and higher education. Uh, Valpreet has previously received um, in the Norwegian bilateral funding from the INCP program that Hilda mentioned this morning uh, for his cooperation project with the Indian Institute of Technology in Delhi, uh, which resulted in more than uh, 40 mobilities of students and staff between Norway and India, as well as two patent applications. He uh, also has exposure on mobility project with the EU, such as the Marie Curie actions um, the individual fellowships, as well as the innovative training networks, and has also re uh, recently received uh, support from the INFRAD program. Um, so please, uh, Mr. Volpe. Thank you, uh, Karina, and good morning, all of you. Um, so I, in the next 10 minutes, I'll present my experience with working with India over the last uh, five years or so. Uh, I see that uh, in several talks, uh, we have heard about Indian Institute of Technology, IITs, uh, and my collaboration in this case is with IIT New Delhi, um, similar to Stina's one with IIT Mumbai. So perhaps for the audience, I could uh, kind of brief you about IITs. These are excellent research institutes in India. They are There were five IITs to start with, and now India has around 20 IITs or perhaps more than 20 IITs. And many of these institutes uh, are Apex Institute in India. And they are, and most of them have, have a residential campus where the students and the staff live within the campus. It's almost like a small um, vibrant city in itself. So uh, that's uh, just to put the things in the prospect about different IITs. Um, and I had a very productive uh, collaboration with the IIT New Delhi and I'll in my talk share some practical tips of how we went about doing things and what were the challenges and how did we solve that. And I also I will give you a brief overview of the activity itself. Uh, so when you think about working with India, I mean, first thing is the collaboration and the mobility is uh, perhaps uh, uh, we are all convinced that it's mobility are essential in science. This goes with the motto from European Union as well, that researchers in motion. And uh, if you want to collaborate, uh, and different funding agencies promote collaboration and mobility. For example, in, at UIT, we have a fantastic uh, collaboration projects between three faculty initiatives called thematic program, which encourage people to collaborate between the different disciplines. Similarly, we have programs by Research Council of Norway or even by European Union, where the collaboration is the mantra of the science. And, and so far, the, we don't have many options with international mobility. And this is where I think DQ programs, Uthfors, becomes very essential because they provide us global collaboration and mobility opportunities. Uh, the job, uh, I mean, we have got some projects from uh, DQ and RCN on the collaboration and the mobilities, and we have been extremely happy with that uh, and the exposure that it brings to our students in Norway. So where did our collaboration started with India? Um, there was this INCP call, which I think uh, Hilda and Man has also mentioned. Uh, it's called Indo-Norwegian Cooperation Program, uh, INCP call in short. Uh, it was announced in 2014, and we had the deadline to apply for that. Um, and just like uh, Stina mentioned in her talk, we wanted to look, look for suitable partners where we can have long institutional ties, which could be uh, beneficially mutually. And then uh, just 15 days before the deadline, 
we did had found our partner table in uh, in IIT Delhi, uh, a team from Tromso, myself and one of our administrative colleague, we flew to India to set up this project and submitted that project. Um, and we were very happy to receive the funding of this project. And this is how it all started in 2015. Um, just a short overview of the project itself. Uh, it was originally ran uh, for three years funding. Uh, it got an extension by another year. Uh, the, the funding was around 1.6 million Norwegian kroner. And this project was all for the mobility. So if you think about these funding in terms of the mobility, it was quite significant mobility uh, possibilities for us. And as uh, Karina mentioned, we had around 40 mobilities within the scope of the project itself. But after the project ended in 2018, before we got the in-part project, we had institutional ties which supported 10 plus additional mobilities uh, within the framework of uh, INCP project. So, um, so first, when we wanted to look out for the synergies, uh, uh, I mean, I'm originally from India and I was aware of uh, the, the benchmarking of excellency by Indian Institute of Technology. Uh, for our case, for our application, we are working on uh, nanotechnology and, and um, optical microscopy techniques. We were looking for an uh, institute which has a very strong expertise on fundamental optics and applied photonics. And uh, for just to give you an impression, uh, the, there is no degree offered in photonics in Norway. We have photonic research activities in almost every university in, in Norway, but we don't have a master program dedicated to photonics itself. And as a comparison to that, uh, Indian Institute of Techn Delhi, IIT Delhi, was offering master degree in applied optics since 1960s. So they had a very, very strong department focused on 17 professors and more than few hundred uh, PhD students working on photonics. So for us, uh, it was a very obvious choice to approach to IIT Delhi. And that was the synergy from our side. And from the IIT Delhi side, they were looking for a case where they can use their optical sciences and applied photonics uh, into new multidisciplinary application. And, uh, and here in, Th in Throm, so we had a, have a very vibrant and young nanoscopy research activities where we had above around 20, 30 PhD and postdocs and many master students working in the field of applied nanoscopy. So we wanted to synergize the fundamental optical sciences collaboration with multidisciplinary bioimaging application. So the aim really was that our students can travel to India, can learn about these focused courses. And similarly, the students from India can come and visit in our labs and work on the most cutting edge multidisciplinary applications. Um, so this was kind of the synergy that we started uh, or we envisioned back in 2014. And I must say that it has been um, a wonderful experience since then. Uh, in terms of what we have achieved uh, over a period of years, uh, we have achieved 50 plus mobilities, which signify, signifies that the, mo the mobilities did actually happen. And also the fact that people like to have a long-term relationship here. We organized two winter workshops in New Delhi uh, and also two summer workshops in uh, Tromso. Uh, and as you might have, uh, we are from University of Tromso in the Arctic. so. This is the dress code what Indian collaborators are wearing in summer in Tromso. And this is the dress code of what we were wearing in winter in India. So uh, just to put you where we were uh, and how this collaboration turned out. Uh, um, the workshops attended in India was quite successful. We always have more than 50 plus applicant uh, uh, participant in, in, uh, in India. Uh, there was an interesting figure by Hilda where she showed about the number of student mobilities between India and Norway. Uh, we had the very similar experience that we had far more mobilities from Indian uh, side than from Norway side. Uh, and I perhaps believe that simply to do with the ratio of number of students that we had as opposed to what India had. And uh, there were far more number of students present in India than what we had access to ourselves in Norway. Um, in terms of scientific achievements, uh, uh, again, I think these mobilities did turn out uh, and were very, very productive for us, uh, but for, uh, also for our students and also for students from India. We had published uh, 20, more than 25 research uh, journal papers over the last five years, and several of them are in review now. Uh, we are working in the field of instrumentation. So um, 
the, whenever we develop a new method, it could have implication in different fields of life sciences. And therefore, it is naturally for us to opt for uh, uh, pre-commercialization activities and opt for innovation components. We did include students from both the side, from India as well as from Norway, to to uh, consolidate the innovation spec and apply for the joint patent application between India and Norway. Uh, we have so far submitted two joint patent application uh, where both the academic and the student staffs are involved from both the countries. And both of these applications are at the, um, uh, at, at the PCT stage at the moment. Uh, we have more than 20 plus conferences, international and national conferences, where our research work has been published. Um, we had these summer schools and winter workshops where we actually also give uh, five ECT credits uh, to people who were registered. And uh, the MOU uh, between India and uh, Norway was signed back in 2015. Uh, and it was lasted for five years. And now we have renewed our uh, our uh, MOU in 2020 for the next five years. Uh, we have also signed in interinstitutional agreement in 2008. Um, perhaps this is relevant for those people who are looking for a potential innovation with India, because most of the MOUs will be very generic. And therefore, if once you go to a patenting stage, it is wise to have interinstitutional agreements uh, and an early involvement of tech transfer from, from both the countries. I will talk more about that later in my talk. Um, uh, and we did had a co-supervised PhD and master program within the INCP program, uh, project. And last but not the least, we had a wonderful and long-term institutional level collaborative ties. Uh, uh, we are at the moment from UIT exploring a possibility of a focus scholarship program with the MOUs that we have signed on. And our fac NT faculty is looking at that at the moment. Um, many of our articles have been published to a high impact research journals, uh, uh, scientific reports, optics letters. These are uh, quite high uh, rated general in our field. And one of our paper recently published in 2020 with the partners with India was one of the most downloaded paper in Biomedical Optics Express. Just to show you the, the visibility that we produced in with our collaboration was also uh, uh, taken a notice by the international community. Um, as I've mentioned about the innovation component, I, I think this is where uh, in the last couple of years, it has really picked up. Um, the instrumentation that we were developing uh, did had a role to play in several fields of life sciences. So we went out um, for a patent application and uh, it was a very nice exposure to the students employed. Uh, there was a potential challenge as well there because the innovation in India and innovation in Norway could be very different. Uh, and therefore we, we recognize that it is better for the academic professors to include tech transfer from both the sites quite early in the process. And we did that uh, in the last year of the INCP project. We asked for the extension for one year and we got that. And the idea really was to have the mobilities between the uh, technology transfer office in India and in Norway with the aim of signing the inter-institutional agreement which will govern the commercialization activities. And we did sign that uh, last year. So that was quite nice because it allows uh, us to uh, freely move onwards. Um, it is interesting to note that innovation in Norway uh, or in Europe for that matter or the Western world in our areas, which is an instrumentation, relies on the technical edge over competitor. So if your instrumentation can do one thing which no other can do, that's what the people are looking for. They're looking for really an edge in the technology. While in innovation in India, mostly uh, is driven by the cost and whether your technology can be more cost effective and can be mass disseminated to a very, very large market. Uh, that's why uh, consumer market in India is very, very big. Uh, and so this, is, was, this was quite interesting for our students and also for the students from India is to have this understanding about innovation. Uh, wherever our student is always looking for a technical edge, uh, people from India were looking, how can we do this thing smartly at low cost? Uh, and there are there were some practical challenges. It was uh, it was a very enjoyable trip, but we have learned a lot. Uh, and one thing that we did correct, I think, from the beginning, is that we included an administrative staff mobilities. Uh, every visit in India, at least uh, every year, uh, we had uh, administrative staff traveling from Norway to India and from uh, India to Norway. 
And at least from our side, we have involved the international student advisors uh, and department student advisors. And this has been very productive because the amount of paperwork and the, the different uh, clauses would have been just too much for the academic professors to handle with such large number of mobilities happening uh, with the housing request, with the visa issues, uh, with the ECT credits. I think it was very nice for us to be able to have a very closely linked administrative staff who knows from the both sides and they're actually traveling between Norway and India. Uh, we were very happy with this. Uh, we would recommend other people who are thinking in these lines. Uh, also, as Tina mentioned, we uh, did contact embassies earlier on uh, within, the, within the INCP project. Uh, we had contacts with Indian High Commission in Oslo and similarly uh, Royal Norwegian Embassy in New Delhi uh, so that the visa process can, be, can, be, uh, can go smoothly and we have an anchor point in respective countries for un unforeseen uh, cases. Also, this is very useful and I would uh, highly recommend that. Uh, perhaps you will hear more about Nordic Indian Center as well. Um, when it comes to innovation, uh, I think it was very important for us to involve tech transfer office instead of us doing everything uh, from, the, from the academic side. Uh, one thing that we learned is that patenting cost in India is very low, uh, it's very affordable. Uh, while uh, in Norway, it's quite high. So the holding capacity in India could be quite uh, longer than when, what we have. Uh, once we go into innovation, we need to really have uh, a partner in the technology. Uh, and also the IP procedures, uh, procedures are very different in India and Norway. So if your work does or could lead to innovation, I think it's a smart idea to, uh, to involve the tech transfer earlier in your project. Uh, there are difference in culture and communication. Uh, in our side, it was a little bit easier because I was originally, I'm originally from India. So it was uh, un quite smooth in that respect. But we, uh, I, we did foresee that there are some hierarchical structure in India. The communications between the professor and the students could, could be, is, is not as uh, flat as it is in Norway. So it's important that we develop a common understanding of what we want to achieve uh, within our scientific goals and uh, geographical locations are very different. Uh, I mean, North Norway and North India uh, could, uh, this is where we were collaborating in, in terms of the uh, geographical location. And uh, we would, it could be very uh, demanding for students in uh, India to come in cold winters and likewise for our student to go in summer. So we have to have winter workshops in India and summer workshops in Norway. Um, and again, our uh, mobilities and resources and uh, availabilities were also, uh, we had some challenges. Uh, uh, our students prefer to have short trips, but more often trips. Uh, so we had more trips, but less uh, in uh, shorter periods, while Indian students prefer to have longer trips. And that's mostly in our field, which was on experimental physics areas. So this might be different for different application, but this is our experience from last five years. Uh, moving forward, uh, and the added advantage of working with in India is that, as also Man has hinted, Indian institutes have very well uh, had very vast uh, visibility in in in, uh, in Western world, and we use use that as an anchor point to integrate um, in part project where we want to set up a virtual center of nanoscopy. Uh, here we have taken a inclusive approach of research, education, and innovation all together, where IIT Delhi and UIT Norway will support uh, PhDs and the postdocs in the virtual center and the our partners from the Boston area, MIT and Harvard will join the research center mostly on the innovation and the excellency on science. And we have a partner from Germany, uh, EMBL, which will provide specialized training in this program. And we are now looking at to extend this collaboration from IIT Delhi and it has also swing out to different IITs now uh, and we are open to that. And one such good examples was uh, in the last year, my colleagues who were originally not a part of the INCP project uh, has started using the INCP base and collaborate with IIT Dhanbad, IIT Guwahati. And now, for example, I'm also working with IIT Chennai. So we are now looking out to span out of work mobilities and then this SARS-CoV-2 pandemic happened. And uh, we did had issues and um, my colleagues, Dilip, Krishna and Habib, um, did a fantastic job. So these are the results from their, their activities is that they set up these five virtual internship and they actually enrolled the students at UIT using a special curriculum where every student did got 20 credits. Uh, 
they conducted a weekly seminars and they had monthly joint uh, meeting. It was uh, possible in, in this case because it, most of the work was on artificial intelligence and advanced imaging. And the biggest challenge that uh, were focused was to make the experimental data available to the students from India. And in this case, we solved that by making our students work closely on the experimental side and letting the, the students from India work on the image processing side. We also come up to a problem of computational resources into, in, during this pandemic because we generated large data sets and for students to access this large data set, we have to set up a special service so that the students from India and Norway can jointly work on that. So we did learn a, a lot of these pros and cons of these virtual uh, training. And uh, it is uh, physical training can never replace uh, virtual training. And we did see that there will be a lack of interpretation of data generated in either sides, unless until people can really travel and work together. And these virtual uh, mobilities have taught us that we don't have to stop. We were still able to be productive uh, and publish work. And we hope that next year uh, we will be able to physically meet, uh, meet up in this case. And then I hope I have used my 10 minutes. I would like to acknowledge all the fundings that we have received uh, over many years. But what I would like to highlight in this is these three projects. While we are very actively looking out funding for science and innovation, in our group, we always look out to match the funding on the mobilities, uh, be it at EU level or at uh, RCN or DQ level. We have tried to marry the mobilities with the excellency in science and innovation so that our students can get an exposure. And I wish you all the best and will be very happy to answer any question. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Balfreit. Uh, a very good example of how you have uh, involved both students and uh, staff, both researchers and uh, administrative staff, and you have um, May this all come together. You're all working on research and innovation and even through the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, very impressive. Um, any questions, uh, Carolina? We have, um, we're getting close to our break, but uh, maybe we could have time for one question. Yes, there is uh, one question, Balpit, and you will have to answer uh, in one sentence only, because we are very short on time. Um, but how challenging was it to find or convince Norwegian students to visit India or uh, IIT Delhi? Uh, it was not very uh, difficult, I would say. Uh, we did have uh, mobilities. Um, there were issues with the health, obviously. Uh, I mean, the food culture in India is a bit different. Uh, I think it was not very difficult for us to convince them to travel to India. Uh, uh, they were, it came with some challenge and experiences. Very well. Um, so I think uh, we uh, sh should do a short break now. I would thank you very much, uh, Balpreet. Uh, we have some other questions. You might uh, just type uh, the answers in to the Q&A if you have the opportunity, Balpreet. Because um, now we think uh, before we have uh, even more interesting cases, uh, we'll have a short break. Just uh, please stay logged in, don't exit. Um, the webinar. Um, you can stretch your legs, get some coffee, and you are ready for part two of the webinar in, uh, yeah, five minutes. <laughs> I think 10.45 is, uh, or fifth, yeah, quarter past three Indian time is good. Okay, so we'll see you all uh, very soon.
Uh, can you unmute yourself? Yes. Okay. Um, we are back um, for the second part of uh, the webinar. Um, so welcome back, everybody. Um, we'll now uh, move on to a, a third case uh, from collaboration within a, uh, another different <laughs> academic field. Um, we'll have uh, presentations from two researchers, from one from the Norwegian side and one from the Indian side. Um, it's uh, Mr. Vaibhav Jadav. Uh, he's an assistant professor at the Department of Education and Extension at Savitibai Pule Pune University uh, in Pune. He is also a coordinator in School of Open Learning and School of Education, as well as a coordinator for the National Resource Center. And he will give the presentation together with Mr. Osmond Ormos, who is an associate professor at the Faculty of Humanities, Sports and Educational Science at the University of Southeastern Norway. Uh, together, they are both involved in a noted funded project in the field of teacher education uh, between USN and SPPU, um, aiming to improve the quality in teacher education through internationalization. In addition to traditional mobility, Vaiba and Osman have extensive experience with online cooperation and virtual mobility, uh, which is especially relevant um, to uh, take notes of in the current situation when the COVID-19 pandemic is restricting physical movement between uh, our two countries. So please, uh, Osman and uh, Vaiba. Good uh, morning, everyone, and good afternoon as well. Uh, namaste. Uh, Mr. Vaibo and uh, I, we are giving a presentation together, and uh, I think this is an example of online co collaboration and virtual mobility. Uh, I think we are, 6,819 kilometers apart. How are you today, Vaibo? Yeah, I'm fine. And namaste to all of you. Because, you know, in the pandemic condition, the namaste is the right way to say hello. Thank you. And uh, we work together in the joint project funded by Noted. And, uh, well, the full name of the project is uh, Quality in Teacher Education joining forces through internationalization and Savitri uh, by Pule Pune University and the University of Southeastern Norway. We have a long history of collaboration and uh, the first joint activities started in 2005. Well, but the joint project that started in 2018 and we focus on important topics of shared interest in teacher education uh, sustainable development and the SDGs, uh, democracy and citizenship, and public health and life skills. And um, I think I will turn back this. The main objective of JOIN is to improve the quality of teacher training programs at USN and SPPU through bringing three ways of internationalization together, the mobility, internationalization at home and virtual mobility. And I think you took this pictures, uh, this picture, uh, Vaibo. What is happening here? Actually, when in this collaboration, I would like to share uh, this thing that uh, when uh, Professor Asman and Walter uh, visit to University of Pune, now it is named as uh, Savitri Bhai Pune Pune University. Savitri Bhai Phule, she is a woman. She was a woman and she was the first teacher uh, in India, in modern India, woman teacher. And when Asman and uh, Professor Walter visited here, we have a, a great uh, discussion with them on internationalization of teacher education. And uh, you cannot believe, Camelia, this uh, session, we are telecast on the same platform. This same platform is established by government of India. 
and this session was telecast and near about 6000 teacher from entire world not only ma not only in india but the from the uk usa um, middle europe and australia people were join and uh, taking the benefit of this uh, collaboration asman so let's uh, go a little bit bit back in time to 2018 the first time we met that was in uh, nortodden and we discussed uh, joint research and uh, mobility both physical mobility and virtual mobility and uh, as a result of this in february 2019 we had our first joint webinar together with uh, the participation of 100 students and staff from india norway finland and iceland um i mean the universities of aulo and iceland are also project partners in our joint project and uh, during the first joint webinar professors from the four universities gave short lectures focusing on sustainable development citizenship and life skills in teacher educations in a teacher and uh, students discussed the content in mixed international groups and during the webinar we also informed the students about po the possibility to go to india or norway for internship or a semester abroad and it was uh, the first webinar was a success and it was interesting to meet across four different time zones to discuss and learn from each other and after the webinar six usn students contacted me about and applied for internship in india and two un usn students even applied for six months in pune um, and uh, the students going to india for internship were enrolled in a preparation program which included three uh, additional webinars with partners in india one webinar with the university and uh, professor bibo was uh, involved mr bibo and there with one webinar with the placement school and one with the local usn representative in pune so uh, the students going to um, to uh, to india for placement they also saw a film made by the two norwegian students on a full semester abroad in uh, in the fall of uh, 2019 and uh, here you um, you can see a picture of the two students uh, informing the other students preparing for india about the school system and about uh, living conditions and so on could you tell a little bit about the um, exchanges uh, you know about the webinar uh, where the students were involved and uh, the exchange of the two norwegian students uh, bible yeah uh the uh, in this exchange program uh, we in we uh, actually there are four student from the norway they decided they came, they want to come here and they want to take the <clears throat> one semester here unfortunately uh, there were two two students uh, have a drop out we can say but uh, rest of two sebastian and seve they completed their entire program in school of education i would like to say here both students of two different papers different courses from different department for example severe uh, opted inclusive education in the department of education under the school of education and sebastian of one another paper name is that yoga education i would like to say here another important thing is that you cannot believe the yoga is has very importance nowadays in the life of the human being and we started this yoga program in india we started master of arts in yoga this is a master program and sebastian completed the entire semester and he or both are earned the four credits in the program of yoga again i would like to add here Sebastian, the person who is a very uh, enthusiastic uh, student, and uh, every time both are ready to participate in cultural program. General, for example, you know you cannot uh, you know that uh, 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 Ganpati is a big festival here in India, and both are participated here uh, in this program. 
and all cultural academia and all part all program they were participated enthusiastically for example navratri mahotsav we have a big uh, program in navratri that time i i i i i remember that professor walter and professor ashman they also participated in our cultural hiking program and that was a great output uh, in the department of education again there is there is one program that is name is that gym management the gym management is also opted by the sebastian and he successfully both student successfully completed all the courses in master program and uh, our honor honor our vice chancellor and our dean are very pleased to such kind of the collaboration with the usn in india thank you i th i think this combination of uh, different ways of internationalization is kind of the key here and that we both uh, offer these webinars for all the students at the usn in teacher education and at the spdu and uh, that is for the money and for the few it's the possibility to go for one full semester and uh, more a few more students that can go for for a, a placement abroad so it's combining different ways of internationalization that has been a key to our successful collaboration i think and that uh, students can go for placement or internship in indian schools and during that period they can discuss their experiences with the teachers in india and the professors at the university and um, in addition to do this um, um, mobility or or uh, organize uh, mobilities we also do research and i just want to mention this because we are running out of time that we have published also on internationalization in our collaboration and this is from our last meeting in uh, pune and we continue our collaboration in teacher education and uh, thank you to SPPU uh, for the um, collaboration to noted for the funding for deco for organizing this webinar and giving us the opportunity to share our experiences thank you i think 10 minutes are gone all right uh thank you so much viva and uh, osman um yeah, I think um, it's a very good case of how you uh, how you have managed to uh, keep in touch through virtual um, mobility and uh, digital cooperation, as well as uh, different kind of modes of uh, physical mobility, including internships in in schools and um, yeah. And uh, so I think this is a very good uh, case. Um, any questions, Carolina, or uh, should we move on to? Uh, there is one question uh, on um, from IIT Ropar. Are Norwegian educational institutions open to remote educational internships for university students in India? Um, so uh, I assume they are asking about uh, Indian students for uh, virtual internships to Norway. Um, do you have any reflections on that? I think we have these um, uh, webinars where we uh, uh, work together and uh, explore uh, common important topics in teacher education. And these are uh, one day webinars. Of course, that could be a possibility to further develop this, to, to broaden up a little bit and uh, see if we can organize uh, more webinars. Uh, of a longer length. That is my uh, comment mm -hmm. on that. Bye, Bab. You also wanted to comment. <laughs> now, regarding the internship, uh, regarding internship, uh, we had some collaboration with school here in Pune, and the collaboration is with the government school and public school. So our uh, Norwegian student experienced government school and public school both in entire semester. And this, uh, this collaboration with the government school and private school, I think this kind of experience may be very useful for their 
next program hmm that's i want thank you i have uh, not any more questions camilla so i think we can move on in the program all right uh we are very pleased to have uh with us, the director uh, at the Nordic Center um, in India today. Uh, the Nordic Center, or NCI, is a consortium uh, of leading universities and research institutions in Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway, and Sweden. And the center's objective is to facilitate cooperation in research in higher education between the Nordic countries and in India. And they offer on, on ground support uh, for their member institutions. Um, in the context of ongoing pan uh, the pandemic, NCI continues to offer this valuable support. Um, so please, uh, Mrs. Cristobal Royan, um, the screen is yours. Thank you, Camilla. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you for this opportunity to highlight what the Nordic Center in India has been doing and can do for universities across the Nordic region. Um, uh, quickly to introduce, or maybe I should not reintroduce uh, the NCI since Camilla has uh, since uh, Camilla has already spoken about it. We are a consortium of seventeen universities. I think the important thing here is uh, the Nordic Center in India was created by South Asianists uh, researchers in the Nordic region who were interested in India. And uh, the, uh, for, to, uh, to a, uh, for a very long time, we were dealing with uh, the needs and interests of scholars or, who are working in South Asia, who are working in social sciences and humanities located in um, India. And it's only more recently now that we are opening up to other disciplines and their interest towards India. So it's only the past few years that we've become much more open to other interests that uh, universities across the Nordic region would have uh, in India, and that has been a very exciting uh, opening up for the Nordic Center in India too. In the year 2005, uh, uh, the Nordic Center in India established a liaison office in India. So we basically a uh, non-profit, which is controlled by the government of India, the uh, Reserve Bank of India, we're completely non-profit in, uh, and uh, completely controlled by regulations. And uh, this works very well for us because we are then a very trusted bridge between both uh, Nordic universities, which are non-profit, and uh, Indian public universities, which again do not have a profit orientation. So it's very easy to put ourselves and place ourselves there as a genuinely uh, useful uh, tool for both uh, member universities as well as partner universities in India. Uh, our uh, organizational setup is basically our office in India, which does the practical activities, and we have our primary administrative control through the secretariat, which is located now at Aarhus University. It is a moving secretariat. It moves across the member universities. So this is basically how we are um, uh, organizationally designed. And our aim primarily is to further research and higher education cooperation between our member universities and higher education institutions across India. And the objective is to provide economical and efficient solutions to member university researchers, students, staff, uh, so that they can better negotiate their engagement with the higher educational institutions across uh, India. Uh, you can quickly see the membership profile here. Um, in Denmark, uh, in Norway, we are limited to University of Bergen, University of Oslo, and more used to, more recently, Oslo Metropolitan University. So we've been uh, serving these three universities in the in Norway, uh, uh, with Oslo Metropolitan University being a fairly new member to the consortium. Um, how we work, we basically have a member universities on the Nordic side, and we create a network of, we've created a network of partner universities on the Indian side based on various different uh, requirements. Uh, strategic partners for very specific areas of interest, disciplinary interest, general partners uh, with whom we can uh, consider long-term larger collaboration uh, op options for our member university needs. We've got specific engagements uh, related to uh, workshops related to student engagement, student mobility, things like that. So we've got a wide uh, bouquet of public universities that we are engaged with, that we have ties with across the Indian higher educational landscape. Uh, basically, now we've also included, uh, because we are moving into the idea of creating internship opportunities for students, we've also now included NGOs in our larger network. And for the purposes of networking, we're also working together with 
uh, relevant stakeholders, both in the governmental sector of both uh, on both the Indian and the Nordic side. So our network is increasing so that we can provide greater support to our Nordic member university students, staff and researchers. Uh, that is how we functionally work. Our focus is, of course, on serving practical needs and creating opportunities for mobility, providing a platform for networking, becoming a useful source of information dissemination, and of course, also trying to pitch uh, and create a greater space for uh, Nordic universities in the minds of Indian students, so that Indian students know what the great uh, opportunities are in the Nordic region in terms of qualitative uh, higher education, quality, high quality research in higher education. So that is another area that we are working in is to try and boost up the visibility of Nordic uh, member universities in the Indian side. And we do this primarily through our social media pages. So if you have a quick look at the Twitter pages or a quick, quick look at the Facebook pages, and we have two Facebook pages for two different sets of audiences, you will see that we are pushing our uh, member universities, various um, you know programs, particularly related to India, research-based opportunities, Opportunities, employment opportunities for doctoral students, postdoctoral students. So this is uh, largely what we are doing with regard to uh, focus, bringing more focus to member universities in the Indian higher educational landscape. Uh, now, uh, functionally now, uh, uh, why is an organization like the Nordic Center in India important? And I think the importance of the Nordic Center in India comes in because of the large nature and complex nature of the higher educational landscape in India. Negoti negotiating your way through Indian higher educational institutions can be quite daunting, especially if you're doing it for the first time, but it is immensely rewarding, as you can see from the presentations of the previous panelists. It is therefore essential to have realistic expectations when aiming to work with India, simply because culturally India is very different from the, to the Nordic region. Indian high, higher educational institutions can be quite hierarchical. They can be quite formal, bound by red tape. Indians also tend to be more formal. They are hesitant to say no. They are open to uncertainty when executing plans, which is very dissimilar to the way the Nordic uh, uh, higher educational institutions and Nordic plans generally work. And uh, therefore, these things need to be taken in cognizance when you decide to work with India and Indian partners. Similarly, in terms of mobility, for example, you have to take into cognizance the fact that Indian higher educational institutions, while some of them do have international offices, these international offices are not necessarily professionalized. Neither do they have the necessary skills to, uh, or the necessary competencies have not yet developed to uh, serve the needs of international students. And therefore, an institution like the Nordic Center in India can be very useful to member universities and Indian higher educational institutions because we can help clearly communicate whatever the requirements and expectations of both sides are. And uh, you know, cultural competencies and cultural communication can be made much more simpler uh, through an organization like the Nordic Center in India. And another advantage here is that the Nordic Center in India sometimes knows much more in terms of what are the rules and regulations that are um, determining uh, aspects of internationalization and mobility. A good example of this is, you know, when a foreign student comes to India and needs to stay in India on a student visa for a fairly beyond a certain point of time, they need to register themselves with the local FRRO, Foreign Regional Registration Office. In most cases, and in the first 15 days of arrival, in most cases, most Indian higher educational institutions do not know that they need to facilitate this process and the student doesn't know. And therefore, they run afoul of Indian authorities very early into their experience with India which can be quite a difficult uh, experience for the students. And therefore, an organization like the Nordic Center in India can help both the students as well as the Indian institution in terms of, uh, you know, being sure of whatever steps are required to make this entire process of mobility smooth for Indian students. Even in terms of researchers, a lot of paperwork sometimes needs to be taken care of uh, when you're applying for uh, joint funding activities and uh, when you're applying to funding agencies. And sometimes it becomes very difficult to get the necessary signatures, to get paperwork moving on the Indian side. You know, practically speaking, the NCI is very good at helping move these things along and getting explanations when explanations don't necessarily come when the Nordic uh, partner asks the Indian partner. So in those kind of areas, I think it's very good to have an institution like the Nordic Center in India. Another advantage of uh, the things, uh, the work that we do is has got to do with the fact that Nordic member universities in relation to India need not, are not necessarily, uh, they do not necessarily have a consolidated approach with regard to what they want from India. 
and that can be quite a disadvantage because um, uh, for a you know if a student or a small bunch of students want to work with india or a small bunch of researchers want to work with india they don't necessarily know what are the immediate uh, um, what are the immediate resources that are available to them and so you know if uh, a member if nci if a member university researcher can quite easily Uh, approach us a student or a researcher can quite easily approach us and we can help make the process much more simpler for them uh, because we have developed competencies in the area despite uh, the fact that maybe member universities do not necessarily have competencies in terms of dealing with india uh, in terms of negotiating um, you know research and higher education mobility with india so that's where practically the nordic center in india can play a useful role to member university students as well as uh, researchers and of course the international office now i quickly will show you what are the services that we provide on a regular basis i mean one of the core competencies of the nordic center in india which we've been doing for more than a decade is actually arranging mobility programs for students we've been running summer co uh, summer courses thematic summer courses and semester programs for over a decade with partners across primarily the south of india which we've now moved up also to the north and uh, northern india and eastern india a reason for moving uh, working primarily with southern india is southern india can be more open and easy for uh, students uh, coming from the nordic side than north india which can be a little daunting at least in the beginning for certain students um so as i said we do uh, summer programs we've been running programs on the envi on environmental sustainability gender human rights a lot of social science uh, related programs we've been running semester courses where students can come and be part of a typical um, high uh, typical university central university in india and they can take courses with students and you know truly mix and be part of an immersive experience with india uh, we've had language programs specifically hindi language programs both in tier 2 cities as well as metropolitan cities in india so that students get a flavor of both kinds of uh, you know how the language is used in both uh, uh, in different setup in different uh, environments we've also done customized field based multi city field trips a good example of this is what we do for teacher training students of lin shoping university they come and they you know they want to experience how teacher training and uh, uh, teaching of uh, you know uh, teaching occurs in specific disciplines uh in india and that is uh, we give them an experience of that across various cities in the northern and eastern india we take care of everything we arrange their academic program we arrange their travel we arrange you know that's the nature of the services the bouquet of services that we provide not only the academic part of things but also practical issues because in many cases indian partners are not necessarily geared towards taking care of practical issues especially with uh, international students foreign students nordic students in particular who have much more uh, you know uh, they they have health problems much more quickly than maybe students from other uh, regions so uh, we take care of these issues and we see that there's a minimum guarantee that is uh, a minimum uh, service that is guaranteed to students whether in terms of healthcare whether in terms of boarding and lodging you know things like that so that's uh, something that we do more recently we've started an internship bank the idea of the internship bank is to provide curated internship opportunities for students nordic member university students and uh, this is primarily in the area of teacher training social work education uh, uh, information technology uh, management uh, most recently we signed in we are signing we are in the process of signing an mou with the finnish chamber of commerce in india uh, so that we can get nordic students to come and work with uh, indian uh, with the uh, no, uh, finnish companies that operate in india similarly we have an understanding with larsen and tubro in the nordic region so that you know nordic students can come and work in larsen and tubro's project in the nordic side there's the infosys which is a uh, which is in which is a big it giant uh, based in india uh, they have their step up program so you know we've got these linkages to um, in uh, to internship opportunities we're also creating smaller internship opportunities for students in the area of urban sustainability uh public health dentistry nursing this is another area that we are creating competencies in so the students will have opportunities to come and spend the required period of time that is required as part of their degree program to come and experience uh the working culture in india and also you know get uh, to be part of uh, not only uh, a, a company or an organization that does uh, work in these areas but also experience the academic side of uh, things so we'd like to mix the two together so that the student gets a fair fairly good idea of uh, you know their discipline and how it works in in, in india uh, we also now are going to the area of orientation we've uh, we've always provided orientation to students because students nordic students sometimes do not really understand what it means to come to india and uh, a lot of them 
uh, get disappointed simply because they have unrealistic expectations of India, unrealistic, unrealistic ideas of what India is like. So uh, this is another thing we do. We do a lot of hand holdings with individual students. We help individual students, students who want to come to India for field work, uh, for example, at a bachelor level, master level, doctoral students. We assist them in everything from applying for the visa. We help them with paperwork for the visa. We help them with uh, boarding, lodging, house, uh, you know, boarding, lodging. We provide, you know, anything. And also, of course, networking. Uh, we've got students who have very specific interests uh, in terms of their uh, thematic focus as part of their uh, field uh, study. And we help uh, connect them to the right people, whether in Indian academia or in the NGO sector. So this is something else that we have a competency in and we have been doing for more than a decade. So this is some, these are some of the services we provide for member university students. Now for member university researchers, whether it is one researcher or a group of researcher, again, I can, I, I can also say that we do so much simply because we do not have volumes of, uh, in terms of the requests coming from member universities. The volumes are still quite low, simply because we do not, we've seen uh, a big fall in the number of mobility, in the number of students that are coming from the Nordic side to India. And that's why we've, uh, we've come up with the idea of internships, hoping that, you know, more Nordic students would be interested in India. More Nordic students see India as a very uh, promising uh, opportunity to help in their career prospects as well, which you know, it is true that, you know, uh, students working in India, they develop a whole new kind of cultural competency that they may not get from working within the European Union, for example. So we are hoping to get more students in and therefore we are creating more and more different kinds of programs and opportunities to help support this, uh, hopefully this demand that should or could come up in the future. Yeah, back to member university researchers. Again, we help them primarily with networking, finding the right kind of partners in India, especially if you're a first timer. We help with what are the formal issues, uh, both when applying for a visa, whether it's a business visa, and then later a research visa with institutional um, uh, affiliations. Uh, we provide help then with practical issues. We provide help in also in terms of running conferences and workshops. I think one practical problem that a lot of researchers who want to conduct activities in India will see is that when you want to fund or partly fund a program in India, it sometimes becomes very difficult to route the money through the university. So the Nordic Center in India is a useful uh, source then because in many times we are the ones that actually put in the money and let the uh, event run and then the secretariat then, uh, you know, you can directly pay the secretariat on the Nordic side. Uh, so it becomes the transfer of money and the, you know, the movement of things become much more simpler if you use the Nordic Center in India. It's much more easier to run conferences. It's also very economical because we do not charge overheads or anything of that sort when it comes to our member university uh, researchers. We also have small grant programs. We have uh, small travel grants and academy, uh, academic activity grants uh, travel grants for member university researchers, doctoral level and above, who want to come and travel to India. We provide, the, you know, basically the ticket, and then academic activity grants, wherein we provide a certain amount of money for, you know, um, small academic activities that uh, are uh, where you see at least two member universities and an Indian partner collaborate, and hopefully that lays the ground for much more um, fruitful uh, collaboration at a later uh, later uh, stage. So that's basically where we at networking opportunities and practical support. Those are again, two major things that we provide for member university researchers. Another plus that we have is that we have an India office residence. The India office is primarily based in a residence. So there are bedrooms available. People can come and actually stay. Nordic uh, students, uh, staff, uh, researchers can stay in the member un uh, in the Delhi office for short stays, it is extremely uh, easy to stay there. It is also located in a very nice part of Delhi, extremely safe, convenient. Uh, you provide, uh, you get a fair amount of comfort staying in the uh, residence. And you also then immediately get practical support for your larger plans in India through the office. The office also helps in terms of, you know, booking your uh, simple things like uh, figuring out your uh, train tickets, which can be quite daunting for a foreigner who wants to, you know, travel in India. Uh, you know, domestic travel, local travel, all these things will be taken care of. And you know that quality is assured and also you're not going to be overcharged because that's another problem with the traveling in India is that you tend to get uh, overcharged just because you are a, an outsider. And that all those problems are kind of resolved if you go through the Nordic Center because, you know, they we take care of all these practical issues that can cause a lot of stress uh, when you are working in India. The residence also has a small space, and in this space, you can also hold uh, smaller workshops and events, and it's extremely uh, economical to do so because it's just your 
food costs and uh, you know very basic costs that are attached to it this is an example of the indian co in the this is the indian cosmopolitan alternative project which is located at uh, university of oslo they had a writers workshop uh, that they held there we've had many such events we've had alumni events we've had uh, you know small groups of students uh, lectures for small groups of students we've had uh, winter workshops uh, most recently in early 2020 we had a winter workshop uh, for, uh, which was between the university of eastern finland university of iceland the tata institute of social sciences that was hosted here so you know these kind of things are also very easily managed at the nordic center in india as i said the folk, the, the primary advantage is of course economy it is very cheap to do things like that with the nordic center in india's office the office staff also helps in terms of managing a wide variety of your practical needs so again practical health networking and a certain amount of services that come with the office space this is where we are and uh, yeah covid so, uh, i think uh, carolina had uh, carolina had asked me to talk a little bit about uh, covid 19 and internationalization uh, in terms of nordic and uh, india relations in higher education in the era of covid 19 and of course uh, covid 19 has disrupted mobility in the traditional sense of the term and traditional mobility cannot easily be uh, you know uh, it, it cannot easily be taken out of the equation if you want internationalization but then there is a huge scope for changing the way internationalization is done particularly so that more developing country students are included as part of this process and one is one big way of doing this is you know the webinar approach as the previous panelists has spoke, had said and as uh, balpreet had said that you know it has worked very well to create opportunities in terms of these webinars in terms of virtual internships you get more nordic students and indian students to actually interact with each other without worrying about issues of you know travel costs uh, uh, intercultural competencies that need to be developed before traveling you know things like that can be taken care of so i think it'll uh, it lays you know creating competencies in using technology to push mobility will have a long term benefits on internationalization in general and i think that should not be forgotten when it comes to uh, the era that the time is the times that we're living in right now and i think this needs to be taken uh, you know at the moment i think india is still struggling with the whole idea of online teaching and it is still stressful but i think if things continue as they go at least for another year or till fall 2021 which seems to be the way the trajectory in which uh, things are moving i think it would be very interesting to see more indian teachers and uh, nordic faculty members together taking joint programs for a classroom of both indian students and nordic students a lot of indian institutions have really really bright motivated indian students who don't necessarily know about the nordic side who are not necessarily introduced to the quality of teaching and research on the nordic side and i think this is a very good opportunity to integrate the same together and you know at the nordic center in india we would be happy to you know help create these kind of bonds uh, match up institutions on both sides willing people on both sides and get everything running fairly smoothly and quickly so that benefits can easily be accrued so this quickly wraps up my presentation uh, i have not uh, spoken about what nci does to for, for members of the international office but that i think possibility of time and since i'm the last speaker i was fairly quick and thank you very much i'm of course i'm open for questions and quickly also to the earlier uh, there was a question that had come from oslo metropolitan about uh, you know finding partners where residential accommodation can be taken care of i think we we can have a conversation the the person who had asked the question and i can have a later conversation because oslo met is part of the nordic center in india consortium thank you very much kumila and caroline Very well, thank you so much, uh, Cristobal. Um, well, uh, like you said, you can uh, have a, a dialogue with the person uh, asking questions. Uh, so um, perhaps uh, uh, I see that there are some other questions as well, Carolina. Um, but uh, yes, there are, and maybe Cristobal, that you can just reply in the Q and A section. Uh, there is one yes/no question that uh, maybe you could uh, answer to uh, live. Uh, can, is it possible for individual students from um, Norwegian universities that are not a member of the Nordic Center to use your facilities, and uh, will they have to pay? 
Uh, yes, to a certain extent, we do uh, primarily try and work for our member universities alone because our money, our administrative, our budget comes just from the member university fees. We're not a profit-making organization. So it wouldn't make sense for us to work for non-member university students, but we do make exceptions based on the need. And uh, yeah, the based on the need of the student primarily, we do make exceptions. And costs, the costs typically are linked to the real costs at uh, the partner institution. Like for example, a student is taking a course at uh, partner institution of in, in India, the partner institution set the tuition fee. So this tuition fee will should fairly be the same for uh, should be the same for both a member university student and a non member university student, at least that's where we are at the moment, we've not had a lot of requests from non member university students until date, we've usually accommodated a few. Yes. Thank you. Christopher. Uh, so uh, Camilla, um, now uh, I think the screen is uh, yours to talk a bit about uh, funding opportunities. Yes, let me see if I can switch. Yes. All right. Uh, well, we're coming to the end uh, of this webinar today. Uh, so we'll end with some final remarks on funding opportunities and support. Um, See if I can make this work. Yes, um, we have uh, some upcoming calls that might be of interest to you. We have already mentioned the Utforsk and Intpot program. Uh, that are uh, the Utforsk program is administered by DQ and the Intpot program is administered by DQ together with the Research Council of Norway. Um, Utforsk uh, supports joint projects between higher education institutions in Norway um, and Brazil, Canada, China, India, Japan, Russia, South Africa, South Korea, and the US. And projects might be uh, bilateral or multilateral. And the goal of the program um, uh, are to strengthen academic partnerships and enhance quality of study programs at the institutions. Um, there are 100 million Norwegian kroners available in this call that has just been launched. And each project can be awarded uh, up to 3 million Norwegian kroners uh, for a four year duration. The deadline is 1st of February next year. And an application webinar is planned for 19th of November. And you might find more information on uh, DQ's webpage. Uh, Interpart program supports collaboration with almost the same countries as, um, as UTFOSC. Um, as it also is a tool under the Panorama strategy. Um, but it can also support projects with Germany and France. 150 million Norwegian corner is available for a call that has been launched now uh, recently. And you can apply for up to 10 million Norwegian uh, kroners per project for uh, collaboration with, um, with India or any of the other uh, countries. And there's a call for a project of five years duration. Uh, for in part, you have to be um, a partner in a research project or a center, research center to uh, qualify. So you have to uh, see the, the list of, uh, of uh, pre-qualifications in the call for applications. The deadline is already on 18th of November and an application webinar was held last week, but the recording will be made available. So please see the, the website at DQ for more information. Let's see if we can. <laughs> which no maybe Carolina you can switch slide for me uh is this the right one, Camilla? Uh, oh, sorry. Um, it just uh, zoom. <laughs> yeah, this one. Sorry, it just uh, completely stopped from my uh, from my side. 
All right, I'll just quickly mention two upcoming calls um, that Man already mentioned in the beginning of the webinar, the Green Deal Horizon 2020 uh, call and the Aeronet co-fund. Um, they are all under, they are under um, the Horizon 2020 and they uh, are, uh, our co-funding is provided by Indian authorities. So, um, but I think that you will have to uh, um, contact either Man or the Research Council or this uh, website for the Aeronet uh, for more information. Um, and yeah, so we'll, we're just at time. So I think we'll end with just um, a list of areas where you can find support. Of course, you're welcome to contact DQ at any time at india at dq.no. Um, the representative for the Research Council, Innovation Norway and DQ in India, uh, who is Man, you have, have already met today. The Nordic Center in India, who have al already presented all of the ways they can uh, support you. And also we can uh, advise you to look into your access India. They, um, they aim to link uh, researchers in India with uh, researchers in uh, Europe. And uh, they also post uh, relevant calls and uh, webinars and host networking events, etc. All right, um, so we have uh, come to an end today. Uh, we want to thank you all for joining. I want to say a special thanks to all of the presenters of today um, who have shared their insights and their experiences and practical advice. Um, if you didn't get your answered, uh, questions answered today, or if you have any, please contact us. Um, we will also be very grateful for any feedback on how we can support you in the best possible way. Um, and we will also send out an evaluation of this webinar, so we will be very grateful if you reply to it. Um, yeah, so Carolina, I guess that uh, wraps it up. Yes, thank you, Camilla, and uh, thank you to all the panelists and to all the attendees that uh, was patient with us. Uh, we hope uh, you found it inspirational. Uh, I know I did. Uh, and uh, have a good day ahead. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye. Uh, thank you all.